Welcome to part two of these option tutorials. This is going to be part two of three. You can go back to look at part one and you will also see later part three on strategies, but we're going to cover months. Months for options is also very important. Depending on which month you select, you're going to get different behavior characteristics of your trade. If you have a bullish idea, it might take one or two years to get a full value out of that trade. If you're looking to put on income strategies, you may not want all that time. You may want only 30 days or a week or 45 days. It really depends on the type of trade you are trying to set up and also the environment. If you have high volatility, the premium might be higher than normal. You might want to do more income trading. If there's low volatility, you might take advantage of the low premium and look for bigger moves if, if that's the strategy you're looking to do. So I'm going to jump over to the to the options and we're still going to use our Snapchat example, but I want to show you how all the different months look on this on the same strike. So let's say we're just going to do the at the money 11. The current price is near 11. So 11 is the at the money option. Remember, uh, in the money is when the strike is below the current price. Out of the money is a junkier option further away out of the money. So at the money is the nearest to the current price. I'm going to click on the 11 and it's going to show all the different 11 strikes. And if you notice, we're looking at the calls on the left side from the closest to today to the furthest out in time, they're going to go up in value. It's almost like a rental property. You're going to pay a lot of premium for a lot of time and you're going to pay the least amount as as the time runs out. It's like paying for one month of rent versus 12 months of rent. And traders like to pay the least amount as, of, uh, as possible because it reduces their risk. And then investors who are providing liquidity, who are selling those calls, they want to get the most for their safety. So if you're looking to put on a bullish trade, there's a decay feature. These are like trading ice cubes. You got to remember an ice, a big ice cube will start to melt slowly. And then as it shrinks, it spe speeds up because there's more area exposed relative to the size of the, of the ice cube. Um, another way to explain it is when they're, the options are running out of time, a big move will make that small option really worthwhile. So the, the decay might might be a little high and then melt and then move, pop open again as the price moves. Um, that sounded a little wordy, but what I'm trying to explain is they melt slow and then they melt really quickly. But there will be some residual value in the last in the last week, let's say. So just because the option is decaying quicker and quicker doesn't mean it's safe to sell. That's the point I'm trying to make. You don't want to sell a, a really small option because if there's a big move, um, it might hurt you. So as an investor, how do we use this? If we have a, a big idea, a stock that's going to move big, it, we might be better off buying more time and letting the trade work versus buying a lot of these short-term options. So we covered strike before, we're covering time now. They're going to behave differently. If I'm a buyer, I want the most time, which means less decay. If I'm a, a seller, I want my option to shrink quickly. So I want comp compounding to help me. So I might be looking at the two month, 45 days to 60 day uh, options to sell. And if I'm if I'm bullish in a direction, I'm going to want more time. I might be buying a year out, at least six months. Six months to a year seems to be a, a nice place for those big bull moves. And then to help pay for those trades, I might sell 45 days, six, uh, 60 days, 30 days, something that decays quickly but won't move around too much to hurt me. The, uh, the call that 
gamma risk or the spiciness of the option. Let me, let me say that again. If I'm looking for a big bullish move, I want the most time and the least decay because decay or the melting is, is a cost or an expense to me. So I want to pay the least rent for this exposure, this, this bullish exposure. So I'm going to pay for a year call, maybe even a two-year call, okay? Not too far out, out of the money. That, that's how I'll get the most bang for my buck. If the stock moves 20 times, 10 times, 7 times, 5 times, my call will have enough time to capture all of that. And then if I'm selling premium, I'm going to try to sell between 45 and 60 days. That's when the decay curve, the decay curve really starts to, to, to crush. That's how we want to think of options. If you, if you bought a one-year option and now there's only 30 days left, you're going to be kind of worried. You're going to want to roll that premium out, which means you're going to buy it back and, and redeploy at a different time because you want to manage the decay rates. Those are the different different uh, months. I hope this was useful. Obviously, this doesn't cover everything, doesn't cover all the strategies, but this gives you a little bit of a, a sample of how the different months behave and how you combine different months to create a nice little trade depending on your scenario. I hope this was helpful and in part three, I'm going to cover strategies. So follow and then jump over the next one.